welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast, produced in partnership with the A.B. Corcor Foundation for Mental Health. I'm Terry, the creator and co-host of this podcast. I've lived with depression most of my life, and I know how easy it can be to feel all alone in the experience. I'm not alone, and you aren't either. And I'm Dr. Anita Sands, a licensed clinical psychologist with a number of my own diagnoses, all of which bring a certain amount of anxiety and depression along with them. There is great power in shared experiences. We share our own as we engage in intimate and candid conversations with our weekly guests, exploring different perspectives on and experiences with depression. We keep it real because depression is real. We keep it hopeful because there truly is hope in spite of what depression tells you. Hello, Anita. Hi, Terry. You know, some of our episodes are carefully planned, researched, and produced, but others come together more organically, and this is one such episode. It started out as a story of how when a podcast listener, an active member of the Giving Voice to Depression Facebook community page, let us know that she was struggling, we made a post asking the community for support, and what transpired was beautiful. But Terry, I have to stop here and say something. Yeah. This wasn't wasn't planned, but I just want to say thank you for this beautiful labor of love that you have created and worked on for six years just to ensure that no one who is sitting in the darkness of depression doesn't have some light. And I feel like this episode is is just such a an amazing sort of reflection of the work that you've been doing. And I just wanted to say thank you. Well, thank you. Now, how am I supposed to read when I got tears in my eyes? I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but in transcribing the comments that other community members posted for her, I realized that I was feeling better just reading them, that the goodness, the understanding, and the support was reaching me in a deep place. So Anita and I talked and decided that we would do a full episode reading these comments for you, in the hopes that you'll feel better too, and also to demystify what support, what real support looks and sounds like, and emphasizing the point that there is no one right thing to say, and there really aren't wrong things to say if you are coming from a non-judgmental place of caring. So before we hear from Rosaline next week, and we learn how these comments impacted her on that dark night, we're going to just slowly read through and discuss them. And hopefully you'll see how a simple comment from even a stranger online can make a difference. So here now are dozens of our Facebook community members giving their voices to depression. The initial call to action for our online community, which, by the way, we invite you to join. It's on Facebook. Just search for Giving Voice to Depression. It was a post with this note. I wrote, calling community members. Please leave a kind message for Rosaline. We have all been in that dark place. And knowing that others understand and care can make a difference. Thank you. When I'd asked Rosaline for permission to reach out on her behalf, she said she wasn't really in a place to respond to our posts, but that she would be reading them, which we learned she did that night as they poured in. Here are some of the posts that she read. We are going to delete her name from them for this episode just to make it easier for you to receive them as encouragement for you. Debbie wrote, Take it one minute at a time. Watch TV, a movie, bake something. I've been there. Push yourself, even though you don't feel like doing so. Lori wrote, I hope that things will feel a little lighter minute by minute. I hope you can see a picture that is beautiful to you. I hope that you can smell a candle or incense that makes you calm. I hope you can hear music that will transport you to a happy time. I hope that you can see the light that you are to others. We all need each Mm -hmm. other. We are all apart. I've got you, you've got me, we're not alone. And Deborah wrote, we are with you. Keep giving it 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour at a time. 
Watch movies that bring you happiness. Listen to good music from your teen years. But most of all, please stay here. Our world needs you. Wow. I remember one of my very first interviews for this podcast. The man said that in his worst of times, he would play board games. And I remember thinking, board games? Like, that's how could that be an effective tool in mental health management mm-hmm. and in suicide prevention, which is what he was discussing. And it's that distraction. Mm-hmm. You know, I, the power of distraction I have come to really understand. And for me, it's fun, little short little funny videos because I don't really have the attention for a full movie when I'm in it. But it's fascinating. And to, to, to have that, um, well, if you're already doing it, to have that reinforcement that, that that's a good strategy if it works for you. And if you're not doing it, to sort of have that suggestion is is really important. Yeah, I know distraction gets a gets kind of a bum rap um, sometimes. You know that people say you're not really dealing with what you need to, but mm-hmm. but when you've got that black darkness of depression, focusing on the darkness is the worst thing you can do. So in that case, I don't care what the distraction is as long as it doesn't further increase the darkness. If it allows you just to turn away and see something that's got a little bit of light, a little bit of color. Um, that's so important to do. And it doesn't mean that you're not dealing with reality, that right. you are you are coping very well with a very tough reality. Yeah, you're trying to just get through it. Yeah. Okay, some more, because there are so many. So mm-hmm. Felina wrote, I hope you start seeing the light soon. Sending healing thoughts and lights. Please keep going. I've been there myself and wish you were not there right now. From Freeman, though it's dark now, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Do not believe depression's lies. Roseanne sent a few lines from a Leonard Cohen poem that she says always make her feel better. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Mm. Steve wrote, please know that you really matter to many people and that although it's dark right now, The light is coming soon. Louise shared, it takes courage and determination to get through the dark times. Be kind and compassionate to yourself, and you will find the light. And from Gina, there is darkness now, but the light of healing will return. Know that you are part of a community that understands and cares. I wish you healing. I love all of those, and I, you know, I just got back from um, a wedding, and I try to remember that on the ground looking up, if it's a really dark, rainy, stormy day, that as soon as you get above the clouds, that light is shining very, very brightly. Mm -hmm. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. And, And that's something that I remind myself and I remind other people of that the light is always there. And if if you can believe it, even though you can't see it right then, that might be helpful in those really dark times. And hearing you say that, I I think of an eclipse f- for myself mm-hmm. with that metaphor, but it's not just the light out there. Mm-hmm. It's not just like life's light. It's our mm-hmm. light. And, and, you know, we can't see that. Right. Depression will block it. <laughs> it just gets oh, in the way and yes. blocks it. Yes. yes. It feels like it snuffs it out like a candle, but it's truly just blocking yeah. it. But when other people can be there, like we're witnessing here, they're the light. And, you know, if you're in a dark room, Mm -hmm. you don't have to be lit up like a candle or a spotlight. Mm -hmm. If other people are around with lights, you're not in darkness. So Mm -hmm. I just really appreciate, I so appreciate these comments. And again, right now, I'm feeling them in my, you know, like I, like I took a sip of hot cocoa, you know, they're sort of warming my center. They are. They're light. They're bright. They're warming. It's love. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue. Pat wrote, what I'm going to tell you is what I really feel from my heart. Take it one day at a time, one hour at a time. Go at your own pace. I know it's terrible when all you see is darkness, but a little ray of light will appear. I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not telling you it's going to happen in one, two, three, but it will appear. I wish I could give you a hug now, if you'd like it, or I would just give you an ear so I could listen to everything you have to say, if you wanted me to, or just sit with you and not even say anything. 
but just know you have someone to sit with you and you have someone who understands. Mm. I thank you for your honesty because I get that way too. Know that I'm thinking about you. I know this will pass. It just might take a while. And Michelle shared, while we may not know each other, I've been where you've been and I'm proud of you for keeping on. You got this. I promise you won't always feel this way. Remember that depression lies. Bonnie said, I've been there more times than I care to recall. All I can say is to remind yourself every day that this will pass. Sometimes all you can do is get through it moment by moment. And then the next thing you know is that you've made it through another day. And you're one day closer to the day that you will start to feel better. There are better days ahead. And Carolyn wrote, that her recent depression was caused by the wrong medication dosage and that once it was fixed, she felt human again. Another Sarah shared, the horrible thoughts are not the real you. Kathleen wrote, I'm so sorry that you're struggling. Man, it's hard. It's okay to not be okay all the time. My therapist has taught me to turn any amount away from the darkness and do this as often as you can. Depression and suicidality is so hard. I'm so sorry you're in the pit right now. Try not to listen to the lies that depression tells us. See, this is the kind of stuff that can really only come from people who've been there. You know, and Mm -hmm. then and going back to, you know, when when Pat says like, thank you for your honesty. We need to, this is the classic reaching out, right? If Rosaline hadn't written us and said, I am just, in a, you know, potentially dangerous and really bad place, we could never have tapped into this resource. And it's, Mm -hmm. it just, there's something about hearing from someone who's been there as opposed to even, even a a very well-intentioned and and perhaps uh, well-educated, you know, in, in how to speak in a caring way person who hasn't, you know, saying it'll get better. It's different when it has gotten better for the person (laughs) saying that. Right. We, we're we always going to trust someone who's been there yeah. <laughs> a little bit more, just a little bit more than someone who who maybe, like you said, has has caring and some knowledge and understanding. But if you've had that lived experience and and you can say, I was there, I know how this feels, kind of can even show that they know because they're saying those things that mm-hmm. let you know, OK, you were there when you say it's going to get better just believe me, you do tend to trust that person a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Sue wrote, sending you some hope and compassion. Melody said, may you feel our presence during this time. You matter to me and this group of special people. Praying that this heavy load is lifted. Healing thoughts and prayers coming your way. Take one day at a time. Caitlin said, you are not alone. There is still good and beauty in the world, even though you can't see it right now. Turn towards it, look for it, and you'll find it again. You will get through this. Kiss, kiss, and a heart. Charlie wrote, you're not alone, with a big heart emoji. Stacy said, you matter, and you're not alone, even if it feels like it. Hold on to hope. We understand how you feel. It can get better. She explained then that she had been misdiagnosed and had struggled desperately. She said that she now has the right meds and therapy and is feeling better. And then she wrote, I am so sorry you are struggling. Just remember, depression lies. Another Lori wrote, one day at a time, one step at a time, one hour at a time, but keep moving. You are enough just as you are. You are beautiful and you are loved. You are an heart. Marcus said, know that there are others who have been where you are. You are not alone, even if it feels that way. Patricia said, I hope you know that you're not alone, that there are people out there that care and wish to give you strength and support to get through this. And a prayer emoji. Valerie echoed that, saying you're not alone, even though you may think that. It's just a thought, and no rain and darkness lasts forever. One minute, one day at a time. And Danielle, you are a stranger, but you are not abnormal in your fight. We are all here for you and can relate. Keep searching for the light. 
I hope you find beauty in your days ahead. All of these comments are so beautiful and so empathic. And it just really strikes me the things that you're not hearing. Mm. Um, You're not hearing just cheer up. (laughs) Just look at the bright side. Think of all you have to be grateful for or happy about. You need to stop feeling sorry for yourself Mm. or just snap out of it. Um, These are the comments from people who, who really get it, you know, who are not giving you the, you know, the IT equivalent of, well, have you tried turning it off and back on again? You know, um, and, and it doesn't mean that all of those things like gratitude practices and, and trying to find the good in things aren't helpful, but they really can get reduced down to like, you're minimizing me, you're minimizing this experience and you don't get it. Mm -hmm. And so these comments, I just think they all really come from a place of, I get it, I get it Mm -hmm. and I care and I'm not going to give you any of those quick fix, you know, solutions. It's the validation. I read the other day, I hope I can remember this, you you know, the the person wrote in response to those kind of comments, I know I'll get through it. I I know I Mm -hmm. always have, but right Mm -hmm. now I am in it. And would you please acknowledge that? Because it's hard yeah. and it's dark and I'm scared. And mm-hmm. just just acknowledge that. And then I'll do what I've got to do to get through it like I always do. But to have you just mm-hmm. say, eh, you'll get through it can yeah. be so dismissive. Yeah. And I, and I will also say that, you know, if you're not depressed and you've never had a bout of severe depression, it, it might feel like, I'm going to worsen it or deepen it if I just do the validation piece. Mm. If I just say it's so hard, Mm -hmm. it's so dark right now, just, you know, validating where they're at, it can feel like, what if all, what if all all I'm doing is saying, yeah, this is really terrible. Right. Will I feed, will I feed into that depression thought process of, oh no, this other person's saying how awful it is too. So now it's really, really awful. And it's just so important to know you're not going to deepen the experience of a person's depression by acknowledging and validating how awful it is. They're just going to finally feel seen and heard and and not feel so alone, which is exactly what you need when you're there. So I, I do think sometimes people avoid the validation part thinking, I'm just going to make it worse if I tell them, oh, that's really bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? it, it really is as bad as you're feeling. Like they're like, that's not a hopeful thing to say. I don't want to say, I don't want to say that to someone. <sighs> okay, so this next comment, this one gets its own category because it demonstrates the next level you can take when you actually know or are familiar with the person. Sarah, who is on the Giving Voice to Depression team and has been from the very beginning, watches our Facebook community like a protective big sister. She knows all the regulars Mm -hmm. and the parts of their stories that they have shared in posts. And given that it's been seven years, we know quite a bit about some of these people who regularly post. So she wrote, I've been reading your comments for some time now, and I know that you are here. For as much as you give, you are getting in return today. You are loved. You are heard. You deserve all the joy and all the light that seems so absent from you today. We are here, though. Each of us has endured in unique ways. But as a community, we are committed to your health and well-being. You matter to us. How amazing. How amazing is that? And huge shout out to Sarah, who, who does an incredible amount of work almost 24 7 oh she's she literally works 365 days a year on it absolutely yeah 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 just amazing so some more comments ruth wrote sending you love and kindness and then she quoted another community member and added hope wins with a lot of heart emojis Mm -hmm. and heather said close your eyes and imagine the biggest warmest hug that you've ever had Mm. it's from me to you (laughs) great visual a different cindy wrote i hope you know that i am reading these messages to you but they're actually helping me right at this very moment so it is because of you that i'm able to slow down my breathing ease my mind and feel less anxiety thank you for helping me and scott said thank you for being here for me tonight and reminding me that i will never be alone 
helping to shine bits of light in the darkness, like stars in the nighttime sky. You are the light at the end of the dark tunnel, the beacon of a lighthouse, and that row of streetlights leading the way back home. Even when things seem the darkest, the scariest, or the loneliest, none of us are ever alone. I and we are here for you as you are here for me, and you are needed. Genia said, you help each of us through the dark times. It's our turn to help you. Take it one second, one moment at a time. So, even in real time that night, when these posts were coming in for Rosaline, these three stopped me in my tracks, and I thought how incredibly generous of spirit they were, because knowing that depression tells us we're a burden, and you know, you could be like, I'm mm-hmm. so needy that strangers mm-hmm. are having to help me. But they mm-hmm. turned it around and said, you're helping me. So it wasn't that she was needy and needed all this outpouring of support from strangers. Mm-hmm. It was that human beings need support from each other. And, you know, they, they just turned it in such a, a loving way saying, you are being there for me right now, which gives her value. And we're turning our what can be a a part of us we really wish we didn't have or our dark secret or whatever you call your Mm -hmm. depression or however you feel it into a positive because now it's our superpower because we understand and and we can support other people through that and I just really Mm -hmm. liked that I mean I I Mm, just remember thinking I've never thought of doing that isn't it Mm -hmm. it is it's it's amazing and it just feels like you know Somebody being willing, again, this sort of like is the whole point of the podcast, somebody being willing to be real and authentic and transparent about what's really going on means you are human and you will touch other humans. There's nothing about you or anything you've thought or felt or done that can't be understood by another human being. So it just really, it just underscores that not only are you not alone, you're not alien. You are human, and and anything you're going through, other human beings can understand. And really, it's it's our responsibility, even if we've never thought something or felt something or done something, to try to be there as one human to another, to make sure that they feel heard and understood. Yes. There were more. Cheryl wrote, it does get hard, but it will get better. No, we are sending you love light and lots of positive energy to shine a light for you we value you not because of just as a fellow spirit it is hard Mm. everything is going to be okay even when it doesn't feel like it it will be it will tie a knot at the end of that rope and hold on melody said god is on your side and so are we love for you coming from everywhere Barbara said, we're sending out good vibes. Please keep strong, knowing we have your back. Chris said, we are holding you. Hold on to us. Thayer wrote, sending you prayers wrapped in a warm hug. Mm. Rebecca said, I don't know you or your story, but my prayers are with you. Cheryl simply said, you matter. Brenda said, sending positive thoughts your way. And we want to end with Tara's comment. She wrote, I want you to know that even though we haven't met, I care about you. I know what it feels like to be drowning in very intense darkness. It's scary. You are not alone. We are here for you, and we get it. It's a lot to feel so intensely. You're doing the very best you can, and that's all you can do. And that's okay. You are not a burden. You are not wasted space. You have value and worth. I'd like for you to borrow strength from us until you have your own back. You are loved and cared for. We've got you. <laughs> that's just a, that's just so to me the we've mm-hmm. got you. It's just just really it sums this up. Look at what this community did. You know, not only did they have Rosaline, they had each other. Rosaline's doing this had them. It was it was just a coming together in true community to provide real support. And I'm just I'm so amazed by it. And it's not the only time we've done this. Mm-mm. We don't do it often because 
I think it would dilute the impact, and and I, I fear that maybe people wouldn't uh, participate as often. But when we do, and we have, I don't know, maybe a dozen times over the seven years, it's always mm-hmm. been like this. And I know, like Sarah, not as much as Sarah, but I know some of these people. I, I have mm-hmm. also interacted with them. Some are previous podcast guests. Some I just mm-hmm. know from the Facebook community. I know that some are parents who have lost their children by suicide recently. I know mm-hmm. that oh, I get. I know that one of the women who wrote not only has treatment resistant depression, but was recently diagnosed with stage four cancer. I mean, mm-hmm. these are not people who are sitting there in whatever you know utopia. People who are always happy are in, and I don't. I don't mm-hmm. mean to presume that there's such a thing, but these are people who are in it too, in mm-hmm. it, and they're you know it's like. They're going back into the fire with a bucket mm-hmm. to help somebody else. Right. And that's the part that, like, well, obviously, if you saw me, um, totally chokes me up because yeah. it's not just like, hey, oh, yeah, I was depressed once and I'm all better now. And um, now I can, from this place of betterness, offer you support. It, it, they're right there sitting in that mud puddle with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and reaching out with the knowledge that, they need to that you know she needed to know that she wasn't alone i don't know how i don't know how you can do that at times but i think it must also help you feel less alone yeah. and that's that's what we're going for but that is that is an amazing thing the level of empathy that people who are struggling have for other struggling people is is so great it's so great sometimes and we just need we just need to increase that amongst all people <laughs> You yeah. know, just that ability to to care and to reach out. And I and I hope that that, you know, listening to this, that you get the sense of these are some of the things to say. These are some of the things that uh, that are really helpful when you're when you're in it. All of these people yep. sharing from the bottom of their hearts. And like you said, sometimes in the pit that they're sitting yep. in themselves. I mean, what? What a celebration of the best of humanity is what oh. I I was feeling about this entire thing. Just wow, 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 wow. And thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. And when we hear from Rosaline next week, there were a lot of heart emojis and virtual hugs and those kinds of things. Not my jam, right? I don't know that <laughs> I would feel supported seeing those. But because she was crying when she was reading these, those mm-hmm. were easier for her. Mm-hmm. She, you know, the the longer word she said she had to come back to a couple days later and, and read. But I think one of the bottom line messages, I hope, of this episode is you don't have to have the perfect thing no. locked and loaded to say to somebody. No. You just have to say, damn, it's hard. I, mm-hmm. I, I hear you. I see you. You do matter. I've been there. All those things that are real mm-hmm. and just listening. If you don't have that lived experience, then just shut up and listen if they feel like talking, if we feel like talking, mm-hmm. and just be there. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit on the other side with, you know, from where you're at. I, I'm a sucker for those emojis. I'm a, uh. Uh, you know, you can speak to me with a heart emoji, um, and, and, and I will feel the love that is being sent. Um, and so I don't ever think of that as being a shortcut, you know, for trying to find the perfect words, because again, there, there are no perfect words, mm-hmm. but there's, there's, there's perfect caring, there's perfect love, there's, there's perfect um, wanting you to not feel alone. So yeah, yeah. perfect what intention, a, perfect yeah. intention. I love that. I love that, Terry. Yeah. Next week, we hear from Rosaline. So it's not just how, how we <laughs> responded to these things, which is pretty clear, but how mm-hmm. she did. And it was a dark night for her, and mm. it made a huge difference. So, so we hope you join us next week as well. Yes. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate and reflect on your own experience with depression, or better understand how to support someone else who is struggling. If this episode has been of comfort or value to you, know that there are hundreds of others like it in our archive, which you can easily find at our website, givingvoicetodepression.com. 
And remember, if you're struggling, speak up, even if it's hard. If someone else is struggling, take the time to listen 